Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I don't know if you saw this yesterday, but there was a large cargo ship that collided into this bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland. It took the whole thing down. In case you don't know uh, where Baltimore is at, uh, Baltimore is just a little bit northeast of Washington, D.C. Uh, these two cities are relatively close. And uh, that's fitting because the theme of this video is going to be about the transfer of power between current world governments and Christ's uh, kingdom during the millennial reign. And I feel like this event right here uh, is potentially a foreshadowing of that because of the symbolism that's involved. We're also going to be talking about the Kirtland Temple. There were a couple new articles that came out about the reopening of the Kirtland Temple on Monday, and I just want to show you how this all goes together. So before we do that, here's the update on the Flood the Earth Challenge. Uh, there's two new people that got baptized, which brings us to a total of 43. And I'm always so amazed when this happens. You guys, sharing the Book of Mormon works. People get baptized when they come across the Book of Mormon. Not everybody, but let's not make that decision for them. You never know what the Lord may have done in that person's life to get them to the point where they're ready to accept the Book of Mormon that you share with them. So don't hold back. So two new people that got baptized. We have uh, a new report of somebody meeting with the missionaries. And then we have 8,431 copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared. We're trying to get to 10,000. And 941 people that have joined the challenge so far. We're trying to get 2,000 with that. Uh, once you share a Book of Mormon, just let me know in the comments or send me an email. Make sure to include hashtag flood. And remember, the easiest way to share the Book of Mormon is with the Gospel Library app. You go to Scriptures, you'll see a button that says Share. Click on that. It gives you a link that you can text or email or a direct message or whatever to share the Book of Mormon app. So it's easier now than it ever has been. We don't need physical copies now. We have digital copies of the Book of Mormon, so please take advantage of that. Okay, so uh, this is really interesting, what just took place. Thankfully, uh, there's only a few people that died. Uh, it could have been worse, but they were able to get people off the bridge before this happened. Uh, here's another video from a Coast Guard helicopter. Uh, this is during the daytime, so you can see um, the wreckage and the disaster uh, more clearly. Okay, so there's this ABC News article, What We Know About Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse. Just hours before the Tuesday morning commute <clears throat> was to get underway, the crew of a massive cargo ship leaving Baltimore Harbor lost propulsion and control of the vessel, causing it to crash into a support column of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, triggering a catastrophic collapse of the 1.6 mile long span and sending vehicles and people into the water, officials said. All right, later on in the article, it remains unclear what caused the loaded 984 foot container ship Dolly, a Singapore flagged vessel to crash into the bridge about a half hour after it began its intended journey out of the second largest seaport in the mid-Atlantic via the Patopsco River under the four-lane Francis, Francis Scott Key Bridge named after the amateur poet who wrote the Star-Spangled Banner in 1814. So this right here I find very interesting. The person that wrote the national anthem for the United States, that is who this bridge is named after. Now, you might remember that just the day before this, on the 25th, that's when we had this lunar eclipse. Uh, it wasn't a total lunar eclipse. It was a penumbral lunar eclipse, but it was an eclipse nonetheless. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty well centered on the United States when you look at this map. And um, that was also the same day that the Kirtland Temple was reopened. So you had an eclipse on that day, the Kirtland Temple was reopened, and then the next day you have essentially the National Anthem Bridge that collapsed. I think that's really interesting. It reminds me of a couple years ago, and I did a video about this, when in 2022 we had the first ever Election Day Blood Moon lunar eclipse. Okay, A blood moon 
on election day, the first time in our nation's history. I don't think you have to be too spiritual to understand that that's probably not a good sign. This blew me away, right? It comes at a time where there's all this political division. Uh, these are the Trump Biden years. We don't know how this year's going to go with the presidential election, but probably not a good sign. So, first ever election day blood moon, and then we just had this bridge collapse, which is the named after the person that wrote the national anthem. It's like the national anthem bridge. So, uh, you know, earlier today I put out that video about the Constitution hanging by a thread, and no doubt it is. Uh, interestingly, we have things like this uh, that have taken place. This is from 2020, but San Francisco proposes art installation to honor black lives where controversial, quote-unquote, uh, statue of Francis Co Scott Key was torn down. So here we have a statue of the person that wrote the national anthem and they tore him down in 2020. So you can see the direction that this nation, this nation is headed. Um, so I just want to point that out. So now we have, there's probably a lot of other, you know, signs that would go along with this, but we have a national anthem bridge that collapses and it's the day after an eclipse. And it's also the day after the Kirtland temple reopened to the public. Um, under church ownership. And so that that's a pretty good segue. Let's start talking about that. Uh, before we do, this is a quote that I've been wanting to share, and this is the perfect video to do it. So this is from Brigham Young. And he says, Brother Kimball has borne his testimony to the truth of the work in which we are engaged. He has exhort, exhorted you to faithfulness and presented practical morality. For your satisfaction, I will present some of my views concerning the kingdom of God and leave the subject for others to elaborate. Erroneous traditions and the powers of darkness have such sway over mankind that when we speak of a theocracy on the earth, the people are frightened. Now, of course, we know that a theocratic government is one that's based on a particular religion, right? In case you don't know what theocracy is. The government of the Holy Catholic Church, from which all the Protestant churches are offshoots, is professedly theocratic, though it is directly opposed to the theocracy described in the Bible. But few, if any, understand what a theocratic government is. In every sense of the word, it is a republican government and differs but little in form from our national, state, and territorial governments. Isn't that interesting? He's describing a theocratic government as being something similar to what we currently have in the United States. Continuing, but its subjects will recognize the will and dictation of the Almighty. The kingdom of God circumscribes and comprehends the municipal laws for the people in their outward government uh, to which pertain the gospel covenants by which the people can be saved. And those covenants pertain to fellowship and faithfulness. The gospel covenants are for those who believe and obey. Municipal laws are for both saint and sinner. The constitution and laws of the United States resemble a theocracy more closely than any government now on the earth or that, that ever has been so far as we know, except the government of the children of Israel to the time when they elected a king. So that was like the period of judges. All governments are more or less under the control of the Almighty. That's pretty important to note, by the way. All governments are more or less under the control of the Almighty. I highlight that because there are some people that don't seem to understand this. They don't seem to understand that God is in control and they allow their fear to run wild as though there's no God, which is very strange because this is an LDS audience. Remember, God is in control. Don't act like he's not in control. All governments are more or less under the control of the Almighty and in their forms have sprung from the laws that he has, for, that he has from time to time given to man. Those laws, in passing from generation to generation, have been more or less ad adulterated 
and the result has been the various forms of government now in force among the nations. For as the prophet says of Israel, they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, and broken the everlasting covenant. Whoever lives to see the, see the kingdom of God fully established upon the earth will see a government that will protect every person in his rights. If that government was now reigning upon the land of Joseph, you would see the Roman Catholic, the Greek Catholic, the Episcopalian, the Presbyterian, the Methodist, the Baptist, the Quaker, the Shaker, the Hindu, the Mohammedan, and every class of worshipers most strictly protected in all their municipal rights and in the privilege of worshiping who, what, and when they please, not infringing upon the rights of others. Does any candid person in this sound judgment desire any greater liberty? The Lord has thus far protected and preserved the human family under their various forms and administrations of government, notwithstanding their wickedness, and is still preserving them. But if the kingdom of God or a theocratic government was established on the earth, many practices now prevalent would be abolished. Okay, so I find that very interesting uh, as we move into this next part. So just keep those words in mind. So before the bridge collapse, before the National Anthem bridge collapse, the day before, there was an eclipse. And then there was also the reopening of the Kirtland Temple under the ownership of the church. It just so happened that the Easter study plan on the church website uh, for March 25th, the focus was cleansing the temple. That's like the like the lesson plan or whatever for that day, cleansing the temple. Now, I already did a video that goes into this more, this idea of the cleansing of the temple and the transfer of the, the ownership of the Kirtland Temple from the community of Christ to our church and how that seems to have fulfilled uh, prophecy in a certain section of the Doctrine and Covenants. I can't remember off the top of my mind which section that was, but in case you missed that, you might want to watch this video. I'll put it. I'll put a, the link for it in the description box below. But you have this interesting thing going on with the reopening of the Kirtland Temple and the cleansing of the temple, right? And then I wanted to share a few things from these articles on Deseret News. This one's called, At Kirtland Temple Reopening, Latter-day Saints Talk of Joy and Express Gratitude. The Kirtland Temple reopened Monday after stewardship of the hallowed and historic building transferred from Community of Christ to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay, as we continue, I want you to think about this. Think about the Community of Christ and the Kirtland Temple being in their possession, being equivalent to uh, our current form of government. The United States, you know, it's imperfect. Uh, in fact, it's it's become more and more corrupt over time. But you've had the United States ever since it was founded, and it's not the kingdom of God. Think of the community of Christ and the Kirtland Temple as the United States in this period of time, and then the Kirtland Temple coming into our possession as this, time, this period of time when the church now has control of the Kirtland Temple. Okay, think about it like that. Latter-day Saints rejoiced at the opportunity to share stories of the temple's history on 14 tours during the day. Many also expressed gratitude for Community of Christ as its members continue to clear out its belongings. Right? So, a sign of the transfer. Like, it's not... Like, legally, it's complete. Now the church officially owns uh, the Kirtland Temple. But it's not like everything it just, like, happens all in a day. It's like, okay, everything needs to be out uh, before the transfer of ownership takes place. No, there's these practical considerations, and there's, there's like, a transition time. And we may see the same thing uh, with the second coming in the millennium, the installation of uh, Christ's kingdom it, there's probably going to be some kind of process and it's probably going to be gradual rather than just like abrupt. All right, continuing. A bitingly cold morning yielded to light blue skies and warm sunshine <clears throat> as hours began, as tours began Monday morning. Since the announcement, Latter-day Saints and Community of Christ members have been sharing space as one moves in and the other moves out. 
So again, think of this as like a metaphor or a symbol of what's going to happen when Christ comes. We're going to have one form of government, uh, which is similar. Like Brigham Young said, let's just remind ourselves what he said. But few, I'm sorry, the Constitution and laws of the United States resemble a theocracy more closely than any government now on the earth or that ever has been, so far as we know, except the government of the children of Israel to the time when they elected a king. So, back to this. As one moves in the kingdom of God and the other moves out, the the old way of doing things, the United States, you know, in its corrupted form. In fact, Community of Christ still has 45 more days to complete the move, said President Scott Barrick, who with his wife, Sister Shauna Barrick, leads the missionaries at the, Ohio, at the Ohio Historic Sites of the Church of Jesus Christ. Quote, This transition period has been a bittersweet experience for us because, as we've been learning what to do here, we've been watching our colleagues from the Community of Christ move and gather all their belongings and leave, a space that has been meaningful to them for over a century. Every time we've come in, they've greeted us warmly, they've been gracious and kind, and we look forward to continuing the same relationship. Later on, Monday's new new Church of Jesus Christ tours, crafted by the Historical Sites Division of the Church History Department, focused on the spiritual journey the temple represents. For Latter-day Saints, that includes sharing information about the appearances of Jesus Christ, Moses, Elijah, and Elias to Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery on Easter Sunday in 1836. Christ accepted the temple as a house of the Lord, and the other visitors provided spiritual keys that expanded Latter-day Saint temple ordinances to those in use today. The church, which has 31,330 congregations, now has 189 temples and plans to build 146 more. Until Monday, Latter-day Saint missionaries in Kirtland only discussed the 1836 visitations with people who toured other nearby sites, like the Joseph and Emma Smith home and Newell K. Whitney store near the temple. Quote, We can now tell those stories about what happened in the temple, in the temple, Sister Barrick said. So see, isn't this really neat? Think about the United States and how more and more as time goes by uh, the laws are more and more hostile toward religious freedom and kicking God out of the public square. Right. I think it's a pretty good parallel. The Kirtland temple this whole time, they haven't been telling about how Christ appeared, Moses, Elijah and Elias, but now it's been restored. It's now under um, its proper ownership with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And now we're talking about these things before. It's like God, the story of Christ is now back in the temple where it's been absent for all this time. Okay, continuing. Uh, this is Elder Kyle S. McKay. Quote, there's a slightly different emphasis today. It's unrealistic to expect the community of Christ uh, would tell our story would say in the way that it emphasizes what we believe, but they don't believe. We haven't expected that of them. Now we are saying, now we are saying it the way we believe it. So there are some things that are emphasized that haven't been in the past. And uh, you better bet it's going to be like that in the millennium. Things that you typically don't see in government and in society, uh, we will see in the millennium. All right, continuing. The centerpiece of the tours now is the inner court on the first floor of the temple when missionaries share three historical events, the temple dedication on Palm Sunday, March 27th, 1836, the solemn assembly three days later, and the visitations on Easter Sunday. And just think about the fact that recently in General Conference, we've been stressing these days. Church leadership has been talking about the importance of Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and of course, uh, Easter, and how we need to make Easter uh, basically our our holiest day of the year, our biggest celebration because of what it represents, the atonement. So 
it, like these last few years, these last few conferences and what just happened this month with the purchase of the Kirtland Temple, it's like it all goes together. It's really exciting. Okay. I think just a few more things. Elder McKay said, we want it to hold, or sorry, we want it to be old and remain old, old but safe. Our preservation, our preservationists have a phrase. We're going to make it good as old. We hope to do that. End quote. Minor work has been done during the three week period or the, the three week break to shore up the support in the basement in some walls. Uh, and then Elder McKay says, for the short term, it's safe. But we expect that after some time, and I don't know how long, a year, two, three, I don't know, there will need to be some other structural repairs made and maybe some restoration, end quote, to make the temple more like the original. Again, going along with this metaphor of taking what once was the United States, the Constitution, uh, once we move into the millennium, because there is going to be a constitutional form of government. If you don't know, <clears throat> they were talking about drafting a constitution during the Council of 50, which is where they were actually planning the political kingdom of Christ. They went as far as to uh, design a flag for the kingdom of God, which still flies at Ensign Peak in Salt Lake City. But um, basically, if like everything had remained pristine... You know, if the Constitution um, had not been uh, tampered with, if the government hadn't become corrupt, it's like we're going to have what should have been in the millennium. It's going to be pure. It's not going to be like it is now. Does that make sense? So to make that temple, or in this case, to make that government more like the original, the way that, the way that it was intended to be, quote, there may be some restoration and certainly some support so that the temple can remain safe, but old. Okay, and I think that was it for this article. And then just one more thing uh, from this one. The landmark Kirtland Temple reopens for public tours. See the first photos. And it says, visitors will notice few changes. And think about that in the sense of like when we move into the millennium, maybe things aren't going to be so drastic. The Lord works. He does perform miracles, but he also prefers to work in practical ways, right? And so I think that there's going to be, I, I keep saying, I think there's going to be this transition period as we go from this old world system to a new world system. And so at first it may not be like really dramatic, but over time, it'll be restored to how it should be. Okay, so most visitors will notice few changes, said Ben uh, Pykels, director of the Historic Sites Division that prepared the temple for reopening after the transfer. Workers installed temporary signs uh, consistent with those at other, other historic sites of the Church of Jesus Christ. Quote, permanent signs are months away. The furnishing is almost exactly the same. A few chairs have been added in anticipation of increased visitors, end quote. Tours are kept to a maximum of 25 people, including the missionary hosts, similar to the number permitted by the community of Christ due to the structural nature of the third floor. Quote, we did some structural calculations just to make sure that we can have that many people up there, uh, Pickles or Pickles said. So, that's basically it. You know, we have at least like these two signs, the National Anthem Bridge that collapsed. We had the first ever Election Day blood moon. We know that the government of God, according to Brigham Young, is uh, very similar to uh, the, the, the government of the United States, you know, based on the Constitution and how things have kind of gone awry uh, since the founding of this nation, but it's going to be brought back into its original condition and improved condition there's maybe there'll be some more changes more things revealed but a good symbol of that is the the uh, kirtland temple in the change of ownership from community of christ to where it should be to its its rightful owner the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints 
Okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.